Deutsche Telekom is one of the most vocal supporters of open network architectures in the industry. So I'm talking about this important development with Abdurazak Mudazir. He is SVP of Service and Platform at Telekom Germany and head of Open RAN at the Deutsche Telekom Group. So Abdu, can you give us an update on Deutsche Telekom's plans to introduce open disaggregated architectures into its network? Thank you so much for having me. Deutsche Telekom has been at the forefront of the disaggregated open networks. I think if you look at the uh, open disaggregated access for mobile, um, open RAN or all RAN initiative, we were the founding members of TIP, we were the founding members of the ORAN, and we continue to drive the ecosystem jointly with our partners. When it comes to the fixed access disaggregation, we are also driving the A4 initiative, Access 4.0 initiative, which allows us to produce in a white box BNG fully controlled by SDN, Software Defined Network Controller. And that's something we have gone live since December and uh, able to show that a production in the fixed access is possible using white box PNG. And for open run, we have a number of lab trials going on and we have initiatives across the spectrum that we are driving jointly. But our commitment for open disaggregated architecture does not stop only at the access. We are also driving in the core and as you've seen in our current announcement with the next generation IMS together with our partners, we were able to also produce end-to-end -end voice in a fixed voice in a fully automated production. And that's exactly our commitment to drive open access that allows us for lean and fully automated production. Now, Open RAN is getting a lot of attention across the industry right now. Uh, where is Deutsche Telekom with that specific development? Do you have any Open RAN elements at all or architectures in your live network? So Open RAN is an initiative that uh, we take very seriously with a full commitment to our board of management. What we have already is a lab deployment um, and also different community engagement that are already active in our lab doing some interoperability testing. As communicated um, in the last next target, um, we will also have this year a deployment not far from the capital city Berlin, where we will have a significant amount of open run, which allows us to have hands-on experience in operating a, with a customer on it, a fully open run compliant system. And why are these developments important to Deutsche Telekom and its future? What are the benefits? I think Deutsche Telekom here is not alone in facing the same challenge as our peers to transform. We have very few big vendors that are driving the teleco network. We have very complex networks to operate. Therefore, we are transforming our networks towards more open, cloud-based, cloud-native networks that are simpler and automated to produce. And that's exactly at the center of our disaggregation initiative is to make sure that the hardware and software separation and the functional separation that we introduce allow us to automate our production network. And this is across the entire network spectrum, not only the access network, we, uh, my team recently also won the award for automated next generation IM, IMS uh, production, where we have also shown in real life production, uh, fully disaggregated automated uh, voice production. And that's exactly what we will try to drive in the access network because it allows us to have a lean automated production, which is cost effective and uh, is able to deliver faster time to market. Now, Deutsche Telekom is one of the lead signatories on the European Open RAN MOU. Why is this joint network operator effort necessary? When it comes to Open RAN, it's a new technology paradigm shift. It's something that one operator alone cannot go it 
So we need a concerted effort by our community, by our peers. And I'm happy to see that the four European operators here, the major operators, and together with our others as well, are working together to make sure that a European vibrant startup ecosystem and also the incumbent European vendors would have a clear requirement understanding of what we as the four major operators expect from the future radio access network and our expe expectation timeline on major requirements. And this way we make sure that there is no misunderstanding, there is no uh, one operator going it alone, and it will allow for smaller players to focus in making sure they deliver open radio access network for all of us. So how quickly can a meaningful open RAN ecosystem be developed in Europe? Uh, and, and what are the key requirements to stimulate a regional ecosystem? If we look at the regional aspect of this entire open RAN development, we at Europe are actually lagging behind. And that's why the four major operators in Europe came together and requested and made our intention very clear and request the support from the European government and others. What it needs is a conducive environment for startups to do testing, so open lab uh, a testing environment, to also a chance to smaller players to test out in a real life environment like we're doing in our uh, deployments as announced and as our peers are doing as well. Having said all of that, the open run ecosystem in Europe, it's not going to evolve from zero to 100 overnight. It will need time. And we at Deutsche Telekom expect that this will be a gradual process, starting already from 2021, where we will start a live deployment experience with a limited number of sites to a potential massive deployments in the time frame of 2023. But this will be with a combination of international players, European and non-European. And Europe needs to invest heavily and make sure the startup ecosystem has the right incubators and the right conducive environment to grow. And that will go beyond 2023. How confident is Deutsche Telekom and its fellow MOU signatories that national and regional governments will get behind this initiative? So far, what we have seen is a strong traction both from the European Commission as well as the national and regional governments. We are working already with the German government and other governments where we have our subsidiaries. What we're asking the government is to be aware in allowing the European ecosystem to flourish. It's not as so much to help us deploy a new technology. No, we are also putting our money where our mouth is and making sure that we contribute ourselves to this vibrant startup ecosystem. And from what we've seen so far, there is already a very good appetite and willingness from the regional and European governments to support the Open RAN initiative. And in, in terms of an Open RAN ecosystem, what does the European market need the most? In, in what part of the value chain is there the greatest need for innovation in Europe? Luckily for us in Europe, we have a very strong radio access vendors, incumbent vendors, uh, example, Nokia and Ericsson. And we're happy, especially with Nokia and their willingness to work with us uh, in general in the open run uh, ecosystem development. So if we look at the value chain, I think what we're missing in Europe completely is this entire chipset. We don't have any real chipset provider in Europe that's able to provide the radio access chipset today. And the hardware is another area. The software is something that we see more and more players popping up. And that is something we will see also growing. And we are happy to see that the older incumbent providers of the chipset, so the RF chipsets like uh, Nokia and Ericsson, can step in and make sure that they, they grow it. And also in the integrator space, if you disaggregate the radio access network, you need to integrate and Europe has a potential for that. And the last aspect is the cloud. And I think a cloud is something we've been addressing in different initiatives in Europe and we haven't gotten there yet. And so we need to look at this entire ecosystem, not only a dedicated 
let's say, radio access ecosystem. But also, when I talk about the chipset, I'm not talking about the RF chip, which uh, the European players have a strong presence today, but also this entire chipset, hardware, software, and the management and integration event. And will this all work only if all of the Europe's main operators join in? Uh, do you envisage further support for this initiative? We're very happy to see that uh, the attention, the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding has garnered. Uh, we've seen uh, now that Telecom Italia has joined in and has signed, and many smaller tier two uh, operators have also asked to join the MOU. And we're seeing also traction from uh, uh, adjacent industries as well. And we are open. We want a really open ecosystem. And that's why we're happy to see that um, more and more partners will join us. And it's not a closed uh, four operator initiative. It's just triggered by the four of us, but absolutely open to the rest of the community. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, but isn't there more that the operators could be doing themselves to help the European Open RAN ecosystem, particularly in terms of procurement processes and supplier relationships? I think it's a fair uh, to say that we could do more. And uh, to some extent, uh, even though it's not visible to the public, we are doing more. So we are simplifying our procurement processes uh, and requirement to allow for smaller players to play. I think if uh, uh, you know our processes today with thousands of pages of uh, uh, RFQ requirement, the smaller players don't have the mass to play. And we are trying to simplify that. That's not even enough. We are also using our venture capital arm to invest in players that we believe bring in a strong technology. And that's also an area where we're playing along. And most importantly, we are giving a chance to the smaller startups to come and uh, show their capability in our labs, in our live networks, with a clear vision to integrate them into a live deployment. And so there are steps that we are taking. And I think I see our peers are doing the same and we are in the right direction. Could we be doing more? Absolutely. I think we could do things faster, but that's why is G4 initiatives is a good uh, umbrella. Okay, you, you mentioned there the investment arms of the operators. Um, are they investing already in some open rank companies? Is, is there more they, they could be doing? And is there even an opportunity for them to combine funds to create maybe an independent open round investment fund for Europe? So I, are, are we doing some investments towards the disaggregated access players. Yes, we are. We as Deutsche Telekom have been doing uh, since years, uh, by the way, not only in the access area. We were uh, one of the early investors of Affirm Network, Florian, Oana, and many other uh, uh, access as well as core players. And we continue to invest, Age Core and others that have a significant uh, uh, say in this disaggregated access. In the open run space, we are also continuing to invest and we are keeping our eyes open. And it's the same applies to others that have announced already investment in Altiostar or different kind of um, open run players. I think we have to be clear that an investment from an operator community alone is not sufficient to have a vibrant, strong European open run ecosystem. It requires much more investment than we can put in and it requires a much more conducive environment than just money. And that's why we are asking the governments to act, the European commissions to act, but it does not substitute our own responsibility. When it comes to the uh, common fund, I have no comment at this stage, but that could be an approach that the operator community could be looking at. For me personally, I see what is important is to allow the startup community to flourish through offering them environments and funding where necessary. OK, well, it's early days for the initiative, so uh, we'll see how things progress in 2021 and hopefully catch up later in the year and see how Deutsche Telekom and the whole European Open Round ecosystem is getting on. Abdu, it's been great to talk to you today. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.